Hi, Adam here. One of the things that people that work with me often hear me say is that reward is not a science, it's an art form. What I really mean by that is that reward is not a coldly logical numerical discipline. Uh, we are heavily numbers focused, we are uh, frequently Excel nerds who love a formula and love a spreadsheet. Um, but the thing is, if you follow a purely logical process, you will almost certainly get an illogical outcome. And by that, I mean something that will work in most cases, but actually doesn't work for all. Easy example, pretty much every time that I've designed some sort of sales incentive or team-based incentive, there has been a process where first of all, we do fact finding, we find out what's currently in place, we talk about what sort of measures we have, what kind of behavior we want to motivate, what the budget is, how much we want to hand out, winners, losers, we do all that. We apply this information and we follow a strictly logical process. And yet, I have learned that the first complete design that meets all the specifications that have been requested and that the client or the executive would sign off for saying, yep, yep, fantastic, what you're showing me here does exactly what we wanted to do. I will never consider it to be complete until we have modeled it and shown the impact on the existing individuals if it had been placed in, say, the last 12 months. And the very simple reason for that is a logical process comes to an illogical outcome, at least in the minds of people. So when you actually say, great, so we're doing everything you asked, we are giving you exactly what you want, we've done the numbers, it all works, and these people will earn less. So people earn more too, but it's pretty much always the ones who'll be earning less under the new system that get the focus. And suddenly, a coldly logical, completely, you know, yep, all the principles match up, all of that kind of goes out the window. It's like, oh no, no, we can't do that to those people. We need those people, they'll be demotivated. No, 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 we've got to change it. And normally this is okay. It's not really about protecting individuals, but it's about saying, we followed the purely logical process. Now we need to tweak it. Now we need to make it fit for real world application. And suddenly we are in the art of reward, not the science. So if you're a reward professional and you're just starting out, or to be honest, if you've been doing this for a while and maybe you know you haven't kept this in mind, always remember reward is a lot is an art form. It's about maintaining a human impact. And on this topic, there's one thing over the years, it's very simple and yet it never gets the kind of the attention it deserves. And that's to stop paying people odd salaries. What do I mean by that? Well, typically, if you're hiring someone, you hire them onto what I'm going to refer to as a sensible salary. So you're going to pay them something, uh, I'm gonna keep it annual salaries for this example, but you're going to be paying them 18,000 pound a year, 30,000, 32, 42. It's going to be something that is more or less a round number. However, when you start to get promotions or changes in role or annual salary review, that time of year is coming up, this is gonna happen again for millions of people across the country, you start to get percentages applied. And when percentages get applied, they so often get applied blindly. And when I say blindly, I mean they get stuck on and we start to get odd pounds. And even worse, we start to get pence. Pence on an annual salary. But why does this matter? Do people care about this sort of thing? Well, no, not in a big way. But the thing is, people care in a small way. Annual salary is a very interesting part of reward because I've always maintained you can't really motivate people with an annual salary in the sense that people have to earn and annual salary is the basic core of their comp package. You know, that is what they live on. So, you know, people to a large extent take it for granted. 
it comes every month or every week depending on the payment cycle and yeah it's just there largely you kind of want people to think it's fair and then forget about it to just put it to one side yep I'm treated appropriately now the problem with weird salaries, which is what I'm going to call them there instead of sensible salaries, is it implies science. I once had someone come to me and complain because they had a weird salary. Now there was a lot more to it. They'd been kind of, you know, not getting the increases they wanted. They'd had complained to a manager who kind of left it for months without raising it through to the HR team. But part of his complaint was that he earned something, and I'm going to have to approximate it, but it was like, I earn £25,173 a year. And he said, and when I tell recruitment agents, they laugh. And he was kind of missing the point, because he thought they were laughing because it was so low. And it's just like, no, they're laughing because it's weird. Why is it so exact? Who crunched the numbers and decided that this person was worth exactly £25,173? And the answer is no one. That's not how it works. He started off on a sensible salary and percentages were applied and delivered a weird salary. And it's even worse if you get into pence. And the thing is, his example shows it's fine until it's not fine. And then it grates. It becomes an irritant. So that means we fail one of the golden rules of rewards because people are now thinking about their base salary and they're now a bit hacked off with it because it looks strange and again it kind of suggests that the company has in some way measured you and found that you're worth exactly that a precise number implies a precise process and that's just not the case other examples I mentioned promotions if you were being promoted to a new role and I was going to give you a 25% pay increase oh my gosh fantastic that's brilliant, that's huge, that's transformational. I mean, you know, fantastic. And then I send you a letter which tells you that your new salary is £59,950. Well, fine, it's a 25% pay increase, that's okay. You know, that's, that's no big deal, I've still got loads. But the thing is, why isn't that £60,000? £50 short. Now, in retail, people very deliberately uh, put things at £9.99, you know, £1.99. We've seen it all over the place, and there's a very simple reason, which is that people read numbers from left to right, and the first numbers are the ones they really register. So even though we know £9.99 is essentially the same as £10, from a psychological perspective, you catch the first numbers, and you kind of like, you see it's in a nine. And the same with this poor woman's salary, 59,000. She's in the 50s. The company has taken a look at her and the new position and decided she's not in a 60K job. Now, in her mind, she'll probably go, well, yeah, you know, it's how much do I earn? It, it, it's 60-ish, it's almost. And that's it again. After a while, you're just going to think to yourself, why? Why, why wasn't I worth 60? How come they pegged me just under? And the thing is, it, real world example from early in my career, I just got handed this thing saying, do a letter up for 25%. And I said, oh, for the love of goodness, let's make it 60. And it's like, oh no, we've already told her, we've already confirmed the number. And it's just, oh, wasted opportunity. I thought this would be a quick one, but goodness knows this gets me excited. But with annual salary review coming up in particular, we're gonna have a max exercise where for a lot of people, a percentage is going to be applied. It costs very little to round the new salaries up to say the nearest five or the next 10, okay? It's a simple way. It's like 0 0.02, 0 0.03% of an annual budget. It can be lost in rounding if you set it up as part of your process right from the very start. And the same with promotions. There's a lot of psychological value in sort of tipping people into like, oh, we're gonna give you a 10% increase. To just make sure it rounds to a sensible number. All right, thanks very much for the walk and talk. Cheerio.